Juliet, thank you for joining us. A New York Times reporter, the expose uh, has to do with the Redskins cheerleaders uh, told to serve as escorts for sponsors on the unsavory Costa Rica trip. Uh, fill us in on uh, all of this information if you can, Juliet. Yeah, the uh, a group of Washington Redskins cheerleaders went to Costa Rica for their annual calendar trip in 2013. It turned out to be a little more than they had signed up for, which was, um, you know, in these calendar shoots, as some people might know, the calendars include women scantily clad, sometimes without tops on. You know, they're hiding their breasts, but they're pretty risque poses. And the Redskins had invited uh, some sponsors who were all male, to come and watch these photo shoots in which the women were sometimes completely topless or completely naked, but just with body paint. So these uh, women felt uncomfortable at that point, but not as uncomfortable as they felt a few days later when their team director had called nine of the women out after a one evening practice and said sponsors had handpicked them to go to a nightclub mm. and uh and, and party party with the sponsors one night, and some of the women started crying. They were calling home, calling their boyfriends, saying they felt unsafe. They went to the club without their passports, and uh, were told to flirt and drink um, drink with the men. And on the way out, I guess the police had stopped them because they thought they were prostitutes. So, this is the situation where the Redskins cheerleaders finally decided that uh, they had crossed the line, and they reached out to us to tell their story. So this was uh, 2013 that it happened. Yes. And when did you hear from the uh, former cheerleaders? Well, we just wrote this story. We just ran yesterday. So this was this was recent, okay. uh, although this was not a one off type of trip where the women were asked to entertain sponsors in that manner. They've been having these calendar trips every year and sponsors were formally invited, the Redskins said, for several years, although many years, including recent years, uh, these sponsors have just shown up on their own to, to hang out at the resort or to, to hang out at the dinner time or try to try to go out with these women. And this, and this is not only ha these type of things didn't not only happen on these trips, but also here in Washington. Oh, okay. So this wasn't a one-off here. This, this, had, there was a pattern here. Exactly. This was this, 2013 trip was the, yeah. was the one trip that maybe was the most egregious, but we've, since have gotten calls from other Redskins cheerleaders who are telling us other stories. So this was definitely not a one-off. But didn't Daniel Snyder take over or put the cheerleading uh, aspect or, you know, this part of their uh, franchise in-house? Didn't he, like, take a little bit more ownership of it when he took over this team? Yeah, when, when Dan Snyder brought the team in 1999, he brought the, the cheerleaders who were the Redskinettes, Terrible name, but uh, they were the Redskinettes. He renamed them the Washington Redskins cheerleaders, brought them in-house, and basically made made them more risque, less family-friendly, sc scantily more scantily clad uh, uh, outfits for on game day, and the uh, the calendar shoots got a little more risque. In fact, somebody on Twitter responded to uh, the uh, story yesterday saying that he used to work for the Redskins, and he was told – um, when he was copy editing the uh, calendars, and there are words in the calendars, I'm told, <laughs> um, when he was copy editing them <laughs> to try to make things more more uh, more risque. So, so it's it's when Dan Snyder came in, this this organization took a took a different turn. Snyder was not on any of these junkets. No, he was not. Now, you put in the New York Times article that uh, a Snyder owned radio station once ran a contest where winners would. You'd get a cheerleader to wash your car, and then ask. Yeah, it was. Uh, believe it or not, yeah, five five lucky winners would get uh, the Redskins cheerleaders. You know, they'd come over and wash your car, and it was. Uh, I guess the two guys. There were two guys in the on the in the ad. They were talking back and forth, kind of breathy voices, and one said, "Like, wouldn't you like the opportunity for?" the Redskins cheerleaders to to uh, to scrub you, come over and scrub you or something, or soap you up and scrub you. So it's, uh, you know, obviously sex sells, but, uh, you know, they were really putting it out there in a way that hadn't been done before. Uh, what did the Redskins say when they, uh, did you contact Daniel Snyder or a Redskin official? Of course, <laughs> of course we did. Yeah, we had a response from the Redskins. They not only did they offer the uh, the team director for the cheerleaders, who denied most of what happened in in Costa Rica, although she acknowledged some other uh, some other things happened on a, on a boat trip that they had the uh, the year prior. 
but they basically said that uh, they had never heard of any complaints, and um, and this is uh, this was news to them. Have you, uh, Commissioner, responded to this? Did you reach out to him as well? We reached out to the NFL, and they gave us a. Uh, I believe that there's a statement in the story saying, you know, we we try to work with our clubs to for every for all the cheerleaders and all the employees to be treated fairly. But as the NFL has said in the past, that not every NFL team has cheerleaders, so it's not really it's not really something that they deal with because it's not league wide. So it would would be dealt with team by team. Yeah, you have some other, I mean, I, I encourage people to read this. Uh, I, I mean, it's sad when you, when you read it, but this is, you know, what we going on five years uh, ago, but there are other moments here and other incidents here and the timing of this as well, Julia, because you've got the saints cheerleaders and the dolphin cheerleaders who, uh, you know, have something in play right now with the league. Um, and have you heard from other cheerleaders from other teams? We have. Yeah. And this is not, like I said before, this is not a one-off situation. And you mentioned that it was five years ago, but you know, the one sp- sponsor who was on all these trips that I mentioned in the story, he, he ended his sponsorship just last year. So these boat trips that they took every year that there, there was partying on and mm-hmm. men throwing money at the women, you know, a lot of, a lot of drinking and some women felt uncomfortable. They didn't want to be on these mandatory trips, which the team said weren't mandatory. But, uh, you know, these things are going on as we speak. You know, I can't I don't know of any situation that went on yesterday. But, you know, to say that the Redskins or any of these teams have changed their policies in the last few years, that would be surprising because it's it's a culture. It's a culture of how they entertain their sponsors. Juliet, great stuff. Thank you. We appreciate you joining us. Thanks, Dan. I appreciate it. And it's Juliet McCurr, uh, New York Times reporter. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Dan Patrick Show app.